and welcome back. Today on Much Ado About History, the gods of ancient Egypt. Let's go. You may already know that the ancient Egyptians practiced polytheism. That is, they believed and worshipped many gods. A lot of the Egyptian gods are um, ways of explaining the natural world. They had a god for the sun, the moon, the stars, the land, even the Nile River. So attributing those things to a god was how Egyptians explained them. But they had other gods as well. They had gods that explained their beliefs about the afterlife, that told their story, their history, and that also explained the powers of the pharaoh. So, today on Much Do About History, we'll talk about two of the most prominent and important gods, Osiris and Horus. So here's a painting of Osiris that some of my students created several years ago. The myth of Osiris is that Osiris was an ancient king of Egypt, and he ruled with his wife Isis, who was the goddess of magic. And Osiris' brother, Set, was jealous, jealous of Osiris' power and fame, and so plotted to kill his brother Osiris. And so Osiris' brother, Set, invited him to a gathering and tricked him into getting into a box, and Set nailed the box shut, and he threw it into the Nile River, and Osiris died. Later, uh, Set found Osiris' body, and to make sure that it could not be brought back or resurrected, he chopped it up into 14 pieces and scattered them across the world. Osiris' wife, Isis, was the goddess of magic. She found the pieces of Osiris and, using her powers as goddess of magic, brought him, put him back together and brought him back to life. But we see Osiris has this gray or green colored skin because he's dead. So he's not actually resurrected as a living man. He's resurrected as a god who becomes the ruler of the underworld. You'll always recognize Osiris because he's wearing white. He's wearing linen. He is really the first mummy in Egyptian history. So when Isis found the parts of his body, she put the body back together and bound them back in linen. And that's why he appears this way, kind of beginning the tradition of mummies in Egypt. Um, Osiris usually has this white crown here, which is the white crown of Upper Egypt. These feathers on either side are part of the um, Osiris cult, or people that worshiped Osiris. That was one of their trademarks. And he usually has these two decorations in his hand, a flail and a crook. So what this means is he is god of agriculture, god of fertility, right? The land, farming, and things like that. And he also becomes the, god, the ruler of the underworld. So you'll see in many ancient Egyptian texts, um, the ancient Egyptians had this thing that we call the Book of the Dead, and it's about their beliefs about what happens in death and the afterlife. And one thing they believed is that Osiris is the ruler of the underworld, and a person, when they die, is going to be judged. Their heart is going to be judged. Were they true? Were they a good person? Or were they weighted down with lies or with sin? And the ruler of the underworld is the god Osiris. So this is Horus. Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris. He was actually conceived after Osiris was dead. How is that possible? Well, Isis was goddess of magic. So Horus is the son of Osiris and he seeks vengeance for his father's murder. And so he eventually gets revenge upon Set, who killed Osiris. Horus has the head of a falcon, and he's sometimes referred to as the falcon god. And you'll usually recognize Horus because he's got the body of a man, he's got the head of a falcon. He wears on his head the double crown of Egypt, that is the red crown and the white crown, the crown of Lower Egypt and the crown of Upper Egypt together. So he is given and attributed many powers. He is sometimes called the god of the sky as a falcon. He could you know, rule the sky. And the eyes of Horus were said to see everything. So one of his eyes was the sun, the other was the moon. And as the sky god, he could see all. 
He's also considered the God of the Pharaoh. He's the God of kingship. So whoever the Pharaoh was at the time, the Egyptians believed that that Pharaoh actually was the God Horus. Horus represented the Pharaoh. And so he's got these power symbols. Obviously, he has the crown. Um, he's got, in his left hand, he's got an Ankh, which is the Egyptian power symbol for life. And he's also here got the rod, or like a scepter, a staff, to show military power or to show government power. So one of the most important gods that you'll see in many Egyptian texts and on many sculptures and reliefs is the god Horus. So as you study ancient Egypt, you're going to find out that some of their gods were in place because they brought their society order. Why is the pharaoh so powerful? Why is he like a god on earth? Well, that's explained in the deity of Horus. And the other important question that people wanted answered, what happens to us when we die? All societies have to deal with that. And for the ancient Egyptians, the story was, you'll go to the underworld, and the ruler of the underworld is the god Osiris. So two of the most important gods. Thanks for joining me on Much Ado About History. Until next time, be well, have a good day.